Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. The buyer's journey and the six stages of consumer buying process. Now, Obviously, your goal as a coach, consultant, or small business owner is to get more clients and customers and to generate more revenue and eventually grow your online business so that it's profitable and enjoyable. And assume that is also the goal that you have and you want to achieve for your business. And that's probably why you are listening to our podcast um, and, you know, uh, getting all the information that comes to you from us okay but i got a question for you do you actually understand and have you optimized your customer buyer journey or the buying process up until somebody actually buys your consulting your training your information your expertise or invites you to be a paid speaker for their event for their events do you have a process of recognizing the problems and the actual pain that your customer is going through and have you got ways to help them identify those problems that you can help them um you know alleviate themselves and when they're in the information uh, searching phase um of the buying process have you got content that actually um, engages them, educates them, provides them, and inspires them to want more. And once that's in play, do you give them uh, ways uh, to choose and actually determine if you're the right provider with the right product to give them the payoff so that they can solve their problem? Not a lot of us think that in depth, um, and not a lot of us are optimizing our websites and our online materials so much that we actually um, can direct our customers where to go and um, you know how to actually make a purchase from us so you know how can you achieve this sales goal and how can you actually um, you know optimize this process and what is it that you should do in order for you to actually scale your online business. And I know what you need above all else is an actionable digital marketing strategy, which actually works and is proven to get results for you. Let me tell you something. If you're a coach, consultant, or entrepreneur, you do not need to sacrifice your income so you can do what you love. You can actually do both. I wanna walk you through the simple step-by-step process, um, you know, of the six stages of your consumer buying journey and how you can actually market to these people okay you see the reason why i actually sat down on this podcast today talking about this buyer's journey is we deal with a lot of coaches and consultants and they think that the biggest problem that they have is they just can't get the word out there um you know to their uh, ideal customers The first thing that we obviously uh, try and, um, you know, diagnose the problem is we want to see if they've actually identified their target market and they've clarified their message because a lot of us are just spraying and praying with our marketing there. Back in the 50s when, you know, um, the Italian chefs were cooking pasta, they'll throw some on the wall and... If the pasta has stuck on the wall, then they know that it's ready. So this is what a lot of people are doing with their marketing. They're just throwing stuff out there and not quite uh, recognizing who the information is going to and who actually um, is responding and how are they responding and if they can actually control that journey 
um, you know, up until somebody becomes a paying customer. And I kid you not, I understand fully that growing your own business is tough. I mean, you're cold calling potential clients and having them hang up in your face and you're sending out hundreds of emails without getting as much as, hey, thanks, James. Thanks, Sally, for reaching out. And you're wasting thousands of dollars on ad spend without even generating any qualified leads and it feels like no one actually wants to buy what you're selling and you actually start rely and if you rely on your business um you know to pay rent and put food on your table man every single day i do something for my family i'm just thinking wow what if i couldn't be able to be the dad that i want to become you know when christmas comes uh, and they're opening up their presents and things like that you know i, I just feel like what if i can't um, you know, afford what would happen if I couldn't afford to put their smiles on these faces. And especially when I take my wife on holiday, I mean, when things open up and things like that, you know, it can put an enormous strain on your emotions and you're terrified and you have to give up on your dreams of having a business of your own. And maybe you contemplate on returning to a safe nine to five job with your tail tugged between your legs if you can't bring in customers. Now, I'm hoping that after this podcast, you will have somewhat of a, you know, a solution in identifying, you know, the, the root cause of why you might not be converting your customers when they show up. Okay. Far too often, like I said, coaches and consultants think that their customers or their prospects, their buying journey is just a random process okay you put out a lead magnet there or you put out a video or you put out a social media post and then they sit back and twiddle their thumbs and hope that somebody's just gonna knock on their house's door and say hey i'm here it doesn't work like that you know certain services like what we sell you know are very personal and you know certain customers um, you know, they have a certain way of responding to things that are emotional to them. As a coach, you're dealing with people's lives. You're dealing with people's finances. You're dealing with people's relationships. You're dealing with people's egos. Now, you need to approach them in a certain way um, and in a systematic format, which will um, inform the customer that you definitely have answers to what they're looking for, you know, and a lot of coaches, they're approaching either their products or service marketing in the same way as they just think everyone is their customer. All right. And it's all just based on trial and error or just looking uh, at the latest uh, buzzwords and uh, best practices without actually formulating a buyer's journey which the customer actually feels heard and actually feels understood because like I said you're dealing with people's egos and if you don't appeal to each and every one of their egos for them to understand that you've got the right service then it's grand opening grand closing okay and I want to ask you something. What if there were a distinctive set of steps that your prospects went through before even deciding to make a purchase from you or not? And what if there was a scientific method to actually determine what goes into the buying process and what could actually make your marketing to that target audience, um, you know, become more than a, a crap shot or a shot in the dark? Well, the good news is it does exist. And the actual phrase, um, you know, I mean, the actual purchase is just one step and then the rest of the journey is just you fattening the herd and, and, and making sure that you're fattening the cows ready for slaughter. It might not be a good analogy, but you get what I mean. In fact, there are actually six stages to the customer buying process. And as a marketer, you can actually market to them effectively because not everyone is ready to buy the minute they hear your podcast or the minute they hear your blog post or the minute, um, you know, they know about you. The first stage is pro problem recognition. Now, to put this simply, before a purchase can ever take place, your prospect or your customer must have a reason to believe um, that you've got what they want. They must have, a um, you know, a, a reason to want to even search for whatever 
keywords you have put out there, um, you know, on Google, you know, they want um, to be able or they perceive themselves as a certain person with a unique situation that needs a unique solution. And that desire is different, um, you know, from uh, person to person. And sometimes a lot of our customers cannot articulate their problem. So this is where your content has to help them identify, first of all, them to be the right kind of person with the right kind of problem and that you've got the right kind of solution. Now, for a coach or a consultant, this actually creates an opportunity because you are taking the time to create that problem for the customer, whether they recognize that it actually exists or not. All right. And you're starting their buying journey with you. And for you to do this, you need to put out content. All right. You want to share facts. You want to share testimonials um, of what your product or service can provide. And then you want to ask questions that pull the potential customer into the buyer's journey. Okay. Before you do that, before the customer is ready and has acknowledged and accepted that they have a problem, you can't reach to them because it's like a radio station. If you're not tuned into their problem, if you're not tuned into their succumb and if you're not tuned into what's going on in their life right now, there's no way that your content will resonate and there's no way that your content will engage, okay? And doing this will actually help your potential customer realize that they need um, to have uh, that problem solved. If you put out testimonials out there, uh, people will actually then say, hey, wait a minute, I was going through that and this is how uh, this problem can be solved. Oh my God, let me start searching for information. And speaking of that, they go into the second stage, which is information search. And once they've realized that they've got a problem, the customer search process begins. Now, they know that there's an issue that, um, um, you know, they're facing and they have, have had a hint of a possible solution. Now, it's a, you know, it's, it's like a new scenario for them and they're looking for new foundation because as human beings our brains always are goal seeking mechanism now that they know they have a problem the next goal is to search to see if they have a solution for that so let's say it's a new refrigerator um you know that has a problem and they didn't realize that the water that's leaking at the back is actually going to cause maybe an electrical shock guess what's going to happen they're going to start looking for for an electrician or a plumber near them to actually help them sort it out. And they start looking for information, maybe, or oh, maybe um, some seal that they can buy. All of that, You, if you're the provider of that service, you need to now start, um, you know, like Hansel and Gretel, start, you know, putting stones towards, um, you know, their way home. And the way home is for them to actually buy from you. Okay. So as a coach, consultant, um, you know, or uh, entrepreneur, the best way to market to this need is to now establish your brand, um, you know, or the brand of uh, whoever you're working with as an industry leader in this industry. And you want to uh, make sure that you're providing information. Okay. People um, will if, if, because people are coming to the internet to get information. And if your brand is the one that's providing that information, then they get to know you, like you, and trust you. And people uh, do business with those they know, like, and trust. And when you increase um, the more information that you're putting out on the, on the internet there, um, it actually increases your credibility and actually... Um, the only way that somebody would be able to reciprocate that uh, information that you've given them, if it solves their problem, is to actually buy from you. So if you're there when they're making that um, information search, then it actually creates an opportunity for them to compare and evaluate uh, whatever alternatives that are out there. Okay. Now, speaking of alternatives, 
just because you might stand out among the competition doesn't mean that the customer will eventually just buy from you all right so you don't want to be the person that is giving um you know the customer all that information and also uh, making the customer aware of the problem but you don't then convert that customer so when the customer is evaluating um you know whatever alternatives out there you need to be the person that's leading that discussion in fact m now more than uh, you know never our customers want to make sure that they've actually made enough research before they actually maybe show up um you know to a coach or a consultant because nobody wants to look stupid so because it is even though they might be sure they know what they want. They still want to compare what other options are there and making sure that their decision is the right one. So as a coach or a consultant, this should actually uh, make your life easier. All right. You want to keep them on your site and make sure that you are helping them with that evaluation of these um, you know, alternatives that are out there. Okay. So some companies might actually have, you know, a, a, a rate uh, card or something like an ebook that you can give them for them to evaluate where they are and what sort of um, you know scenarios can arise you know so you want to give them enough information so that it actually simplifies their buying process okay and it actually then establishes the trust that the customer is creating with you and especially when you can help them make these comparisons and show them that you're not just out there to sell to them but actually solve their problem you increase the trust factor that is already uh building um you know towards that purchase decision that they're about to make all right so some, somehow, surprisingly, the purchase decision falls maybe near the middle of the six stages of the customer buyer's journey. And it is at, at this point that the customer has now maybe explored all the options, is now aware that they have a problem, and they're actually understanding maybe the pricing and payment methods, and you've really outlined to them um, what they need to bring to the table when they come for maybe um, a, a consultation or things like that. Because your customer wants to make sure that they're absolutely exploring all available opportunities to them um, just simply uh, based on the information they now have okay so most coaches and consultants run straight to want to uh, make people buy from them immediately but have you noticed we have already looked at three different stages before somebody even makes a purchasing decision so you want to make sure that your website, your uh, collateral, or your social media is driving your person, um, you know, towards the purchase decision. But obviously, do not skimp on all the other stages, um, you know, that 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 I've mentioned earlier on. So when somebody understands your pricing, they understand the payment options, and they're now deciding to uh, move further or not you want to make sure that they don't walk away at this stage this person is fully armed credit card in hand and they're ready um you know to actually you know flip the switch or pick up the phone and call you now this means this is now the time to really step up the game in your marketing process by maybe making it super super easy and very secure uh, for somebody to actually make the right decision. All right. You've probably told them, okay, this is what I've got. This is what it will do for you. This is how it works. And maybe you've mentioned in your copy that this is what I want you to do next, which is now the purchase decision. You need to show them that it is safe and smart for them to continue making that purchase from you. Otherwise they're going to walk away. All right. So you want to step up your marketing on here. Uh, maybe this is where you retarget them with ads and you want to make sure that your website actually has the credibility, the security, and you're reminding um, your customers along the journey why making the purchase uh, from you is the right decision. And at this stage, um, you know, maybe giving as much information relating to the need that was created in the step um, you know, and the steps towards um, this purchase decision and why your brand is the ultimate choice and why you are the best provider to fulfill 
this need and it's very, very essential. Most customers actually walk away from a purchase because they are afraid of making um, a wrong decision. And once somebody has, you know, um, walked away, it's going to be super, super difficult to get them back. So that's why you want to retarget your customers. You want to send simple email reminders that speak of the need, um, you know, for the product and you reiterate the pain and actually really move the pendulum to enforce that they really come back and make this purchase decision. Even if the opportunity seems lost, follow up is where the money is at, all right? So this step is very, very crucial. And a lot of people just jump onto this step without actually, um, you know, making sure that they have plugged all the holes and they've given, um, you know, the customer beyond reasonable doubt all the information that they might need to actually proceed to the buying process. And let me tell you something, in this fourth stage, this is where uh, all the profits are either made or lost because it costs a lot of money to bring somebody to actually make a purchase and it just takes maybe 20 seconds to actually watch them walk away. And once they've made a purchase, all right, you've created the need, uh, all the research has been completed and the customer has actually decided to make a purchase. All the stages that lead to conversion have actually been finished. You have won. Congratulations. You've done the deed. But let me tell you something. This is the actual beginning of the journey because with some uh, coaches or consultants, I think you still have like what's called a cooling off period where somebody can actually make a decision whether to go ahead or not. Um, you know, with the purchase and now they're evaluating, you know, all the hype is gone. They've reached their destination. Half of the time, that's where a lot of people start having what's called buyer's remorse. All right. So this doesn't mean that you have finished the journey. You want to reconfirm with your customer that everything is working. And especially the emails that then come after they've made a purchase are the ones that determine if this customer is going to be a returning customer or not. Because now they're afraid, oh, my God, I've just given these people my money. Three hours later, they still haven't received an email of confirmation from you. They haven't been onboarded. The whole customer experience starts going downhill the moment they purchase. They press purchase. I know you and your team are high-fiving each other and dancing on top of the tables just because you've made a purchase, but your customer is sitting on the other end waiting for them to uh, receive some sort of confirmation that they haven't been robbed. And that's the worst feeling you want your customer to be in. So your customer should not feel lost. Uh, your customer should not feel like, oh my God, they've made the worst decision. This is actually really crucial, um, you know, moment for you to actually regain the confidence that the customer has because they can actually just issue out a refund. I mean, ask for their bank to issue out a refund or something uh, similar to that. So marketing is just as important during this stage as like the other previous stages when they're looking for information, when they are, um, uh, you know, evaluating, you know, their, um, your competitors, ETC. Because marketing at this stage is simply straightforward. You just want to keep it simple. You don't want to overwhelm them with so many uh, things that would then make them think, oh my God, what have I just gotten myself into? So you want to, um, this is the time where even you as a coach or consultant, you want to, um, you know, secret uh, sell. I mean, what is it where you, you go in and you um, spy on a on a company or something like that. You know, you you want to secret buy from your own self. Look at how is it a difficult process. Um, you know, for people to purchase from you because have you ever noticed with Amazon, it's just a one click purchase. You put to cart and then it's already organizing and they don't take money immediately from your account. It's just not. It, it's a very good and nice feeling because what they do is, you know, the money goes in, the, the, the purchase goes and then you look in your bank account and see, wait a minute, they haven't even taken the money. Now you want to make sure that, oh my God, I want to make sure I've got enough money for this purchase. It's not as immediate or, you know. One of those, um, you know, uh, you know, negative inducing um, purchasing experiences where you, you, you make a purchase and maybe your bank is not ready and their credit card gets declined, all of that. You want to make sure that you actually 
test your purchase process online? Is it complicated? Are there way too many steps? Are there many hurdles that your customer has to um, fill in? You know what I mean? All of that stuff can actually just make somebody think, nah, nah, this is too hard. Is is the website loading fast? You know, is your HTTPS working for you, not against you? And can a purchase be completed in just maybe from a mobile device than from a desktop computer? You know, I tried to buy something from David Jones. It's a retail shop here in uh, Australia. And um, as, as, as I was going to make the purchase, they told me, no, you can't get this online. You have to go to the shop. Like, look at that whole um, money that has been wasted bringing me towards, um, you know, purchase point. And then eventually you tell me, no, this can't be done online. You know what I mean? So you want to be upfront with all of these things. Make sure that there's a very good experience when your customers are actually making the purchase because sometimes we're the ones that are actually sabotaging our sales process without even knowing. So you want to ask all these critical questions and make all these adjustments. And if the purchase process is too difficult, customers and therefore revenue will be easily lost because ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time to see until you get ready. So this is one thing that I always tell um, you know, my coaches and consultants, don't skimp on the shopping cart. If you have to make a shopping cart, that's a third party from your website, please um, go ahead with that. Because if the if there's three or four or five or six, seven steps in the purchasing uh, journey, which makes it super difficult because nobody has all that time to actually wait until your page gets it right and puts all the information that they need etc etc you just don't want to make it difficult for people to give you money all right listen to me do not make it hard for people to give you money and then pretty much after that there's that post purchase evaluation that the customer is now doing they just want to make sure they've made the right decision just because the purchase has been made and the process, um, you know, has sort of completed on their screen, it doesn't mean that it has finished within their, um, you know, in their mind or in their psyche. In fact, revenues and 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 your customer loyalty can even can be easily lost the moments after somebody has paid you money because now you owe them now you owe them the service they instantly want something to 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 guarantee that they haven't made the best uh, the worst decision ever in their life so after a purchase is made it's inevitable that the customer might decide whether they are satisfied with the decision they've made or not and they start evaluating and um if a customer feels like they've made a a, a, a bad decision you know um they could actually issue out a refund, like I said earlier. And this could be mitigated by maybe you want to identify, um, you know, where they're coming from and you want to start offering them information uh, about the next steps, you know. And this time also, if the customer is satisfied, is the time that you actually can get a, a testimonial from them. So you want to be very careful when you're engaging with people for the very first time because you want to gauge and understand who they are and where they're coming from and how you can get more, uh, you know, of the same kind of customer, etc., etc. Okay, so you may send them a follow-up survey. Um, you know, you might just send them a thank you uh, email showcasing some of your products or what the next steps are because now somebody has given you money. They just want to know what the next thing will be. All right, so you want to take time and understand these six stages of the customer buying process. People just don't buy stuff just because it's available. They buy things because they need to or they want to, all right? And if you actually do this, it ensures that you actually, um, you know, um, you know, put out your marketing strategies to actually address each and every one of these stages. And it actually leads to higher conversions and longer term customer loyalty. I know as, um, as an entrepreneur, marketing is just one aspect of running a successful business. You're going to be hiring new staff, balancing books, driving growth and more. If you've got people that are working in different sectors of your business, you want to make sure that they're actually doing right by your customers, depending on where they are starting their journey from. Okay. Somebody might just call, um, 
you know, um, you know, making an inquiry and they might already be in stage number three of the buying uh, decision and they're just going to maybe stage number four, which is the actual purchase. And they were probably just evaluating alternatives. You want to make sure that your team can pick up on this and they're highly skilled and trained to look after your customers as soon as they show up on your doorstep. All right. So. At the end of the day, your real goal is to help your customers and you want to spend as much time changing people's lives and solving people's problems. This is part of, um, you know, uh, you really looking after your customers because people have problems out there that need to be solved. But if they can't engage with your business, then how else are they going to have a happier existence? I can't wait to uh, read your comments about this uh, topic that we spoke about today and how these six stages of your customer buying process will actually help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.